Hi, I'm Beverly Bell, and I wrote the novel, The Murder of Marion Miley. It's based on the true story of a leading American golfer, woman golfer in the 1930s until 1941, when she was brutally murdered at her country club in Kentucky. This is the beginning. September 28, 1941, 3.30 a.m. The first bullet entered her back on the left side of Marion's spine, tearing through the lower fibers of her trapezius muscles, the beautiful piece of flesh that controlled her shoulder blades, those same shoulders that made possible the textbook turns in her golf swing, rotating from right to left. Those who knew nothing about golf or anatomy always assumed Marion's power in distance off the tee came from her toned arms or the strength of her grip. Those people were wrong. This, the once sinewy, well-knitted tissue was the source. The bullet ripped through Marion's pectoralis major and exited three inches above her left breast. The second bullet hit the parietal lobe of her brain and graze the motor cortex, which controls body movement and coordinates motor skills. It decimated the ability of Marion's hands and eyes to work seamlessly with the club and ball. She would never again deliver a 250 yard drive down the middle of the fairway or land a delicate pitch on the front of the green, rolling it up within two feet of the hole. Every shot, every stroke, every putt that had to occur in time and sequence, they were all gone now. The same bullet tore through her temporal lobe and with it, she lost the memory of every measure of music she had played on the piano since she was five years old. As it pierced the corpus callosum, the two hemispheres of her brain could no longer communicate. Even if by some miracle she had still been able to peck out the keys, the notes would have been wrote like a child's memorized alphabet without timbre or emotion. The ancient Greeks believed that the soul resided in this portion of the brain. As the bullet exited through her cheek, it took with it all music and marrow, and in its wake, nothing but blackness and silence. If someone else had been the victim, Marion would have reveled in the clinical observation of the damage. The dissection of neurons, blood vessels severed, she would have analyzed this breakdown of a system of systems with a dispassionate scientific eye. The truth was that nothing, including golf, fascinated her more than the human anatomy. There was no doubt that when she had achieved her ultimate goal in golf, winning the national championship, she would go back to school and become the doctor she was always meant to be. If someone else had been shot in a state other than Kentucky, in a place other than the isolated and exclusive Lexington Country Club, perhaps there would have been only one bullet and with it a chance to recover and imagine a different life. Marion would have known which path to choose, pursuing those long dormant medical aspirations, riding horses again, without her father's warning voice ringing in her ear, telling her how one fall, one fracture, could jeopardize her golfing ambitions. And finally, having the time to give Debussy his due. But someone else wasn't the victim of this random deadly crime. Marion Miley was, the gifted daughter of a frustrated golf pro, a national celebrity who had dominated the game for the past decade, a golfer who had met movie stars and a former king and thought it was normal, a girl who died two months before Pearl Harbor and whose name would be shuttered away after the war with all the other bad memories. And it wasn't just one bullet that hit her, the second one blew through her brain, stealing everything, power, finesse, life, breath, and her one chance for immortality, winning at nationals. There would be no recovery, no next act. 
the 27-year-old was dead before her body hit the club's apartment floor.